Hello and welcome to Geek Domo. Today on Star Citizen Ramp Up, we are going to talk about the ships of Star Citizen, what role do they play, and which ones are currently released. We will cover their specs and details. Today's episode is closed captioned for the hearing impaired. First off, what's the big deal about ships in Star Citizen? Unlike other space games, the ships are what you level up. You purchase upgrades, weapons, engines, and more stuff to make your ship that much better than the next guy. The type of ship you start off with in this upgrade quest dictates a great deal of how you will perform later on. Realize this folks, this is meant as a primer for new or interested Star Citizen players. It is not fully comprehensive tome of knowledge in one video. It is going to be a very long video, so grab some popcorn and let's get on with the show. Right now, you can literally purchase a high-end ship for real cash. Later on, this will probably change to in-game credits. As we stated in a previous video, an entry-level ship such as the Aurora will cost about 75,000 credits when the game launches. You will be able to purchase insurance to protect your investment. Let's discuss a little scenario and talk about how the ships play a role. Warning: This is a hypothetical scenario. Please refrain from pointing out minutia. Thank you and have a nice day. You decide that in this life, see previous video referring to permadeath system, that you want to be a miner and mine minerals out in deep space. You have an Aurora with a decent cargo capacity. You have a tractor beam and a mining laser attached to your ship. You venture out into deep space and find yourself a nice rock and start mining. About 20 minutes into your operation, you find your cargo bay is full of rare material worth several hundred thousand credits. You decide to head back to the mining center. As soon as you leave the asteroid field, you see on your radar there's someone at your six following you. You push the throttle to full and head out at full speed. Within moments, a loud bang hits the hull. You panic and call for help. No help comes. And after a minute of running, your ship goes dead in the water. A pirate enters your hold and shoots you in the face. It was only a stun gun and you find yourself in a hospital days later. You have no ship and all those minerals are gone. Because you have insurance policy, you will be refunded the ship, but the cargo is gone, all of the upgrades are gone. You spend the last of your credits purchasing a Gauss Cannon Mega Pew Pew 2000 and paint your ship Revenge Red. That is just one scenario and there are countless encounters like this. It's a frontier and you will need to protect yourself or hire someone to do that for you. As you see, the ship is what you level up. Not in a, ding, I just hit ship level 90. No, instead your ship will be a direct representation of just how badass you are. The more time and effort you put into your ship, the better the chance you will have to survive. It won't make you an amazing pilot if you're not skilled like that in real life. It will, however, give you a fighting chance. That is our quick overview of ship and ship levels. Because ships are so important in this game, we will cover more details about them later on. Let's cover the ships that are going to be out there at release and drill into the details. Warning, the information here is early alpha. It can and may change in the future. Also, the ships I'm covering today are not all of the ships. We will devote an episode to each and every ship as we get closer to release. And there is more information to discuss. First up, we're going to start off with the Robert Space Industries Aurora. Built at the Angeli Prime New Austin Shipyards, this ship is both economical and powerful. The first variant is the Aurora Essential, or the Aurora ES. It has a length of 18.5 meters, a max crew of 1, its mass is 15,000 kilograms. The main focus of the ship is exploration. The upgrade capacity is 4. The cargo capacity is 5 tons. The engine is the Alliance StarTech K9 Fission Mount L1. There is one modifier. The max class is a Fission class. Main thrusters are 1 by TR2 Dragon STC Blue. The maneuvering thrusters are 8 by TR1. The shields are a Seal Inc. 1 size 1. There are two hard points. The hard points are 2 by class 1, which are empty, and 1 by class 3, which are empty. The next variant is the Aurora Mark, which is the combat variant. The length is 18.5 meters. Max crew is 1. Mass is 15,750 kilograms, 750 kilograms heavier than the ES. Its focus is interdiction. The upgrade capacity is 3. The cargo capacity is 5 tons. The engine is an Alliance StarTech K9 Fission. Modifiers are 1. Max class is Fission. Main thrusters are 1 by TR3 Dragon STC Red and 8 by TR1 maneuvering thrusters. The shields are a Seal Inc. size 1 and it has an option of a J-SPAN Omnicool reduction bar pre-installed. Hardpoints 
It has two fixed M3A laser cannons from Bayring and one class 3 which is empty. The next variant is the Aurora Clipper. Length of 18.5 meters. Max crew is 1. The mass is 17,500 kilograms. Its main focus is mercantile. It has an upgrade capacity of 2, cargo capacity of 10 tons. The engine is a Juno Starwork Endurance 300 fission mount. Modifier of 1, max class of fission. Main thrusters are TR3 Xforge PSS280. Moving thrusters times 8 are the TR1s. It has a Gorgon Defender All Stop, size 1 shield. Options that are installed at time of purchase the Tarsus AT Jump Scanner, which is OptiGlass 3.0 compatible. Hard points 2 Class 1s with nothing on them, and 1 Class 3 with nothing on it. Next up is the Aurora LX, 18.5 meters, max crew of 1, mass of 16,500 kilograms. The focus is exploration or light mercantile. Upgrade capacity of 4, cargo capacity of 5 tons, engines the A and R LR overdrive fission, max class is fission, main thrusters are 1 by TR3, OKB Vosh Cod Energia 4, maneuvering thrusters 8 times TR1, shield is Gorgon Defender All Stop size 1, hard points with pre installed hardware are 2 by class 1 bearing fixed M3A laser cannons and one class 3 1 by 4 Talon IR-4 Stalker Missile. Here is a graphic showing the different variants in comparison. If you help fund Star Citizen right now, you will be able to purchase the Aurora MR combat variant for $25. The next ship is the Origin 300i. It has four variants, which include the 300i, the 315p, the 325a, and the 350r. The 300i Touring model is the premier spacecraft haul on the market today. A true jack of all trades, 300i is capable of making any role its own and doing it with the class and sophistication expected of an Origin design. All models feature a Gorgon Defender shield and an A&R OmniSky 6 cannon standard. The first variant is the 300i, length of 24 meters, crew of 1, mass is 20,000 kilograms, its focus is Touring. Upgrade capacity of 5. Cargo capacity of 8 tons. The engine is the ACOM Starheart 3. Main thrusters are Hammer Propulsion HE 5.3 TR3. Maneuvering thrusters 12 by TR1. The shield is the Gorgon Defender All Stop. Hard points installed at the time of purchase. 2 by Class 1 Outer Wing ANR Omnisky 6 Laser Cannon. 1 Class 2 Nose Hard Point, which is empty, and 1 Class 3 Inner Wing which is also empty. The 315P variant. Exploration is man's highest calling. Prepare to chart the distant horizon with man's most sophisticated piece of technology, the Origin 315P. Featuring a more robust power plant and a custom scanning package exclusively designed by Khmer Communications, the 315P is designed for a pilot who wants to go further to see things that few have seen. The length is 24 meters, crew of one. Mass is 20,000 kilograms. The focus is exploration. It has upgrade capacity of 6, a cargo capacity of 8 tons. The engines are a Tyler DTEC Sonic Light 600. The main thruster is a Dragon Stellar STC Silver TR4. Maneuvering thrusters are 12 by TR1. And the shield is the Gorgon Defender All Stop. The 315 comes with two Class 1 Outer Wing. A and R OmniSky 6 laser cannons, and on the nose cone is mounted a tractor beam. On the class 3 mounts the inner wings, nothing comes equipped. Next up is the 325A. This is the fighter version of the 300 series. Length of 24 meters, max crew of 1, mass is 20,000 kilograms, its focus is interdiction, upgrade capacity of 6, cargo capacity of 8 tons. Engines are Ytech LF2 Durability Plus. The main thrusters are Hammer Propulsion HE 5.3 TR3. Maneuvering thrusters are 12 by TR1. The shield is a Gorgon Defender Force Wall. Hard points. Two Class 1 Outer Wings are the A&R OmniSky 6 Laser Cannons. One Class 1 in the nose is the Klaus and Werner Max Driver Cannon. And two Class 3 Inner Wings are the Talon Stalker IR Twin. The final 300 series variant is the 325R. Since the dawn of civilization, humans have striven to build faster machines. 
Now Origin presents the culmination of that effort, the Origin 350R. The combination of a Ganglieri BP707 standard power plant with a 300i fuselet re-engineered to accommodate the twin hammer propulsion HM4.3 thrusters makes the 300R the fastest personal craft you'll ever call your own. The length is 24 meters, the crew is 1, the mass is 17 thousand kilograms. The focus of this craft is racing. Upgrade capacity of six, cargo capacity of five tons. Engines, the Ganglieri BP-707 standard, main thrusters, two times hammer propulsion HM4.3 TR3 times two. Maneuvering thrusters are 12 by TR1. The shield is the Gorgon Defender All Stop. Hard points, class one outer wings, the A&R Omnisky three laser cannon, one by class two nose with nothing equipped, and two by class three inner wings with nothing equipped. If you purchase the bounty hunter level of pledge, you will get the standard 300i for $65. The next ship is the Anvil Hornet, builder Anvil Aerospace. Crew is one, mass is 22,000 kilograms. The focus of this ship is dogfighting or interception. The Hornet is a civilian version of the F-7A Hornet flown off the elite Bengal carrier vanguard of the UEE Navy. While not outfitted for long-range runs, the Hornet can take her share of hits and dish out a consistent, powerful response. The Hornet may be uglier than anything from Origin's lineup, but pilots love them for their rugged reliability. Upgrade capacity of 6, cargo capacity of 4 tons. The engine modifiers are 2, max class of fusion. The thrusters are 1 by TR4, 8 by TR2. There are several hard points, the first one being the 2 by class 1 equipped 2 times Maxon NN13 Neutron Gun, 2 Class 1 equipped 2 by Kloss and Werner KF117 Laser Gatling, 2 by Class 3 equipped 4 times Talon Devastator HS missiles, and 2 by Class 4 with nothing equipped. Note, on the military version of the Hornet, the two Class 4 hardpoints are utilized by a ball turret with twin laser Gatlings and a canard turret with two Newton guns. The ball turret takes four upgrade slots. It's a ball turret or the deck net size cargo hold. The Anvil Hornet civilian version is available at $110 pledge level right now. The next ship up is the MISC Freelancer. MISC is known for producing efficient modular middle of the road ships, primarily transports of different sizes. Freelancers are used as long haul merchant ships by major corporations but they are just as frequently repurposed as dedicated exploration vehicles by independent captains who want to operate on the fringes of the galaxy. Don't let some of the alien technology in the cockpit surprise you. The Freelancer's design owes several of its internal systems to a lend-lease deal with the Zian, manufacturer Musasi Industrial and Starflight Concern, MISC. Primary focus, long-range exploration. Secondary focus, heavy mercantile. Maximum crew, two persons. Mass is 55 tons. Cargo capacity is 20 tons. Length of 32 meters. Height of eight meters. Beam is 15 meters. The beam is reference to how wide the ship is at its widest point. Upgrade capacity of 10. Factory power plant is the group Niveau Paradigm Etoll 00. The main thrusters are two by TR5, the factory engine, the Arc Corp, Arc Duo 400 TR4. The maneuvering thrusters are 8 by TR2. The factory maneuvering thrusters are 8 MISC Zytec. The shields are Beijing GH 146Ms. Hardpoint weapon systems are 4 Class 2 by 2 Bearing Mark 6 laser cannons, 2 Class 3 2 by Bearing Executioner Twin Underwing, and 1 Class 5 Bearing M5A Twin Turret. Additional installed equipment is the Tarsus Leaper Jump Engine. You can purchase the MISC Freelancer available right now for a pledge of $110. Next ship up is the Robert Space Industries Constellation, aka the Connie. When you think of a handsome bounty hunter making his own way in a galaxy of enemies, you think the Constellation. The Constellation, a multi-person freighter, is most popular ship in the RSI's current production array. Constellations are beloved by smugglers and merchants alike because they are modular, high-powered, and just downright iconic looking. The Constellation includes a manned turret, a large cargo area, and a small flight deck capable of launching a snub-nosed fighter in its own defense. 
The manufacturer is Robert Space Industries. The primary focus, long range mercantile. Secondary focus, space superiority. The maximum crew of four people. The one hangar has a P-52 Merlin short range fighter. These specs will follow. Mass of 75 tons, cargo capacity of 35 tons. Length of 51 meters, height of 13 meters. Beam of 23 meters. Upgrade capacity is 20. The hull construction is a carbon nanotube. Maximum power plant size, 6. The factory power plant is a Ytech HFR2+, top speed of 400 kps. The main thrusters are 4x TR6. The factory engine is a hammer propulsion HM5.5 TR5. The manufacturing thrusters are 8x TR3. Factory maneuvering thrusters are 8x Hydra Propulsion M3150. The hardpoint weapon systems are 4x Class 2 4 times bearing M4A laser gimbaled. 6x Class 3 2 times bearing Marksman HS missile 8 pack. 4 additional are available. 2x Class 5 2 times Klaus and Werner CF227 Panther twin turret. An additional equipment that has been installed is the RSI jump engine. The ship has a smaller snub nose fighter in its hangar. This is the P-52 Merlin. Manufacturer, Kruger Intergalactic. Primary focus, dogfighting. Secondary focus, reconnaissance. Maximum crew, one person. Empty mass, 5.5 tons. Cargo capacity is zero. Length of 10 meters, height of three meters, beam of eight meters. Upgrade capacity of one, max power plant size one, Factory power plant is an ACOM Starlight 2. Main thrusters are 3 by TR2. Main the factory engine is a hammer propulsion HM4.1. Maneuvering thrusters are 8 by TR1. Factory maneuvering thrusters are 8 by Hydra propulsions M116. The shield is a SEAL Inc. 1. Hard points for the weapon systems are 3 by Class 2 Nightbridge Arms 9 Series Longsword and 1 by Nightbridge Arms. 2 series broadsword. The constellation is available right now for a pledge of $225. The next ship is the Drake Interplanetary Cutlass. Here is the official press release. Drake Interplanetary claims that the Cutlass is a low cost, easy to maintain solution for local in-system militia units. The larger than average cargo hold, Rio seat, and dedicated tractor mount are, the company's literature insists, for facilitating search and rescue operation. While it is true that the cutlasses are used throughout known space for such missions, their prime task and immediate association is with high space piracy. Cutlasses, often operating in groups, menace distant transit lanes to prey on hapless merchants. A single cutlass can ravage a mid-sized transport and a pack operating as a clan can easily take down larger prey. STOL adaptations allow these interceptors to operate off modified transports or pocket destroyers, the most common warships that make up a pirate caravan. Note: The idea that the Drake Interplanetary builds ships which are ostensibly for legal purposes, local militias, etc., but are obviously for pirates, so it has the appearance of a military freighter but made it to an awkwardly larger hull for collecting loot. It should have visible forward-facing tractor beams and a seat for a second crewman even though there's no turret, as you'll need a second man to board an enemy ship. It also has a cheaper build quality. If Anvil is building Jeeps and Origin is building BMWs, this is a Honda. The manufacturer is Drake Interplanetary. Primary focus, system defense. Secondary focus, piracy. Maximum crew of two. Mass empty is 35 tons. Cargo capacity is 10 tons. Length is 29 meters. Height 7 meters. Beam 25 meters. Upgrade capacity is 12. The max power plant size is 4. Main thrusters are 1 by TR4, maneuvering thrusters 16 by TR2. The hardpoint weapon systems, 2 by Class 1 Maxon NN neutron guns, 1 by Class 2 A and R Mark 6 C tractor beam, 2 by Class 3 Python tracker HS missiles, and 2 by Class 4 nothing equipped. The Cutlass is available for a pledge of $100. The last ship we're going to cover today. The Aegis Dynamics Avenger, an ex police cruiser spacecraft, the Avenger is a powerful platform for bounty hunters to build their fortunes with. Featuring a rugged space frame and plenty of customization options, the Avenger is a great choice for someone who doesn't want the flash of the 300 series. Manufacturer, Aegis Dynamics. Primary focus, interdiction. 
Secondary focus, trainer. Maximum crew, one, two in the trainer variant. Mass is 32 tons. Cargo capacity is 10 tons. Length is 21 meters. Height is seven meters. Beam is 18 meters. The upgrade capacity is four. The max power plant size is three. Main thrusters, one by TR5. Maneuvering thrusters, eight by TR1. Hard points, weapon system. Hard points for the weapon systems. 2x class 1, 2x wingtips, 1x on the nose, and 2x class 3, 2x underwing. We do not have the specs for the weapons that are being offered at this time. The Avenger is the 14th ship released as of today and rounds out the rock, paper, scissor design that Cloud Imperium has been using. You can purchase the Avenger for a pledge of $60. As we stated, this is only a few of the available ships. We will be doing individual episodes on each of these ships as more information about them is released. Stay tuned for more of that coming very soon. That about wraps it up for today's episode. Please leave any comments below. I read them all. Let's discuss today's show. Until next time, this is Geek Domo saying, see ya. What's up my ties? No cops are coming. That's a wide shot, I'm shooting all these bottles. <laughs> it's annoying that it doesn't flash up the um, value of the damage each time you do destroy something. You have no idea what what you're racking up. Oh, I'm stealing the jewelry in the jewelry store. Okay, now we got ten grand. I got nothing. I'm breaking into the safe here. Yeah. There's stuff on the wall here. I'm shooting all these bottles. <laughs> this is expensive wine. Would yeah. you like some cheese with this wine? <laughs>